Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Delusional's Arcade. So in this episode you can see we have a wall of TVs here. We're going to kind of test them all. We're probably going to get a tube donor out of one of these at least, or maybe a few, um, for you know the monitors that we have here, whether it's the K7000, the K4900, or the G07. Um, G07s and 4900s are a little more difficult to find it for because they have a different uh, yoke reading. What we're going to do, we're going to open these all up, tick the yoke readings together, and see if they're compatible. And if they're not, maybe we can do a yoke swap. And we'll see what we can do, but we may keep these on hand just in case. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. Okay, so we have all six TVs right here. And um, I actually had eight total um, from Lewis that he gave me, but um, the two that were not compatible, that we're not gonna test, were 20 inch monitors. So I just got rid of those. Um, I gave them to the local recycle center where they kind of just, um, you know, they responsibly dispose of everything, but they recycle everything. Um, but these 19 inch ones uh, were 19. The way you can tell is on the back, they'll have the model number, as you can see here. It has usually the 19 in it. And you know, you can always Google it and see if you, if you type in this, um, model number and the word specs, sometimes it'll come up, sometimes you'll find manuals on them where you can tell if they're 20s or 19s because they look so close. A lot of people will tell you, hey, this is a 20 inch, I mean, this is a 19 inch I'm giving away and then when you get there, it's 20 inch. So uh, these were all completely free. So again, thanks Lewis for that. Um, but um, the model numbers all match, so I kept these. So we have a Westinghouse, I believe is right here. We have the GE, we have a Magnavox, we have a Broxonic, which is a no-name brand, so never get put off by no-name brands, because a lot of times these will be compatible. And then uh, this is a Sony, it's a Trinitron, but um, I'm gonna test it out myself to see if it works. A lot of times these are not compatible because they're Trinitron, so anything with that usually won't work. But we'll open it up, we'll check it out. The reason I'm checking it out is because this is an older Sony. Uh, it's in an older case, so hopefully it'll be compatible with something that I have. But if not, you know, we'll learn. We're gonna learn together. Okay, so let's bring the first uh, TV here. We're gonna do the uh, the White Westinghouse. See it right there. And what I'm gonna do, the easiest way to do it is you just lay it kind of on the glass. I have a protective uh, padding on the thing here, so it's not gonna really do anything. Um, and you don't really need to see me unscrew it. You kind of get the picture, but basically <laughs> you just go right here. There's usually like four screws, sometimes more, but in this case, there's only four on this one. And the model number on this one is WTV-11901, and it's a uh, White Westinghouse. So let me go ahead and put the screws on the side there. Those are kind of a pain to get out. I'm gonna kind of leave them in there and just take it out with the whole thing. So what you wanna do is just lift up and a lot of times the back portion will get caught on, but this one should be fine. Yep, just took it right out. So uh, you don't wanna to touch the anode cup. You wanna probably discharge it before you mess with it. Um, but this one, kind of doing it off camera. If I can get a pair of pliers in there. So I can't really reach. And I'm pulling out. There we go. I kind of pulled this off the uh, PCB itself, and this is what I'm gonna be testing. So, um, first thing I do usually before I even do that, I'm gonna go ahead and use my cell phone here. Again, it's tubular.atomize.org, and you can see it here if I quickly go on my cell phone. Can you guys see that? Focusing on there. There we go. So, I'm gonna type in the tube number. In this case, it's usually on the side. Here, I'll turn it again so you guys can see it but it's listed right there. This one is uh, A48JLL40X. So I'm just gonna type that in. So let's see, A48. And you'll see on this thing here, as you type it in, I just typed in A48 there. You can see that it's starting to fill in and populate everything. Uh, so A48JLL. 40x so it narrowed it down to one it's at 6.3 volts for the heater g1 is 50 volts and the neck is cr31 so this is a cr31 neck that's usually how i tell what's what can you see that the neck says cr31 so uh it's really cool that you type everything out on that website i put a link in the description too it's really useful to use if you look at my other tube swap video you'll see it too i listed it there 
So it looks like this is a CR31. So um, it's a newer TV, so I kind of assumed it was gonna be that because it's more common. But this is probably gonna be good for a K7000. Now, this will work with the K7000 if you just swap the yokes. But the yoke is at um, this part right here. So this actually can come off, you just loosen it, the whole thing comes off with the purity rings and everything. All comes out and you can use it um, where you take the original one from the arcade and kind of take this one off, put the other one back on. But sometimes you'll get a direct drop and replacement like I did in my other video where I did the tube swap for the K7000. So this one so far probably will work with that. Um, as far as using this as a direct swap, we'll find out right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my meter. In my case, I set it for uh, ohms, so I'm gonna set it for 200. There's a whole bunch of options on mine. It says uh, 20M, 2M, 200K, 20K, 2K. I'm setting mine for 200. And that's the reading that I use. And uh, now that you have this, a lot of times it's small, so you can't fit these in here. So you'll just get it from the back. There's like little, uh, you can see the metal exposed there. So the horizontal is the red and the blue and the vertical is the yellow and the green so they come usually in pairs uh, you never want to cross them when you're trying to put them back on if you ever put them on there so you know sometimes they'll have to switch this around if there's if it's an upside down image or inverted or something um, but if you want to do it actually i'm going to set the continuity first to show you something continuity is just when you touch the two probes together they make a noise and i'm going to take this right here that's the red, and this is the blue, and you should hear a beep. If they're within the same side, like, you know, horizontal, for example, in this case, um, it'll beep because they're in the loop. But if you try taking, like, the yellow one and putting it to the red, it's not going to loop. It's not going to beep because it's not within the loop. So these are two separate things. Just remember that. You don't want to ever cross them. So right now I'm going to do the continuity on the yellow and the green, and you should hear it beep. Yep. But if I do, like, the green and the blue... it's not gonna beep at all because there's no loop. So if you're ever curious, you know, I'm telling you this because sometimes like on the GL7, these aren't color coded. So if you wanna find out what's what, which is the horizontal and which is the vertical, that's how you do it. You know, if they're within the same loop, like these both here are horizontal, you just put them together and it'll beep. So, you know, I just wanted to point that out um, just in case you don't have anything that's not colored. So right now I'm gonna go back to ohms and I'm gonna test the Red. Let me see if I can put this, if you guys can see it. I doubt you'll be able to see it, but we'll give it a shot. Now, you always want to discharge monitors first. This one's not discharged. <laughs> but, you know, you just don't want to touch anything. Um, usually, when you take the yoke off, it does, it's not connected to anything, so you're fine. But, you know, um, these also have been off for months, the guy was telling me. So, um, you know, I decided not to do it because it's not really a risk to take this off right here for me. But if you're, just in case, if you ever... Uh, Want to do it and you're not expert at it, always discharge it. And there's been tons of stuff around, but this is all high voltage anyway. You don't want to mess with this if you're not, if you don't know what you're doing. So I'm going to put the red here and the blue here. And let's see what pops up. So the meter says 3.5. So the horizontal is 3.5. Now I'm going to go to the vertical, which is the green and yellow. And that one is 14.6. So 3.5 and 14.6. So what I do is, what did I do with my masking tape? I just had it here. Oh, here it is. So I get painter's tape right here, the blue one. It's just, I use this because it doesn't leave any residue. You can stick it right on the glass on the front. And I'm gonna go, I just write horizontal and vertical so horizontal um, put in parentheses just to remind myself red and blue and then this one is yellow green and then horizontal was 3.5 ohms and this one was what 14.6 i think it was ohms so that's what you do, you just write it here and then you stick it on there. And what I'll do sometimes, 
Um, I mean, I should have made more room, but um, I'll usually write here. I'll write in between. I'll put it in small letters here. I'll write tube, and then I'll write, I think, what brand was it? Daewoo. D-A-E-W-O-O. -O. And then I'll just write it down, just, just to be safe. So it's A48. J L L and then four zero X and I'll just do that for reference. Oh, and it's also CR 31. All right. So I have all the info I need right here. It's all written down. Um, I do that because I don't want to have to open this up again to figure out what's what. And so I'm going to close it up. I usually don't even bother putting this back on. You don't need to have it back on because obviously I'm not going to be using the TV. So you're going to pop the cover back on and then I'm going to stick this on the front. Um, I'm not going to show you me putting it back together, but it's pretty easy. But you definitely want to save all the parts. You don't want to rip it open because when you do this tube swap, you're going to take this one out, put the old one with the burn-in back in here, and then you can close it up and it'll look like a normal TV with burn-in and you just recycle it. Because a lot of times they won't just stick the tube. It has to be in a case to be safe. So yeah, I'm going to stick this on now. And I'll show you that in one second. All right, so this is it. I'm gonna pop it on the front here. So this here is, I know for a fact, is a drop-in replacement for the K7000. Uh, the ohms match, uh, you could have maximum, I think on the vertical could be 15 is the max and it's 14.6, so it's pretty good. And then the horizontal is around 3.4 around there. And this is 3.5. So this also has a CR31. So if you have a K7000, it has a CR31 um, plug on the back, on the neck, you know, you can put it in there. So just to remind myself, I'm just going to put re right here, K7000. That way I know it's good to go. And I'm going to definitely keep this one. So, I mean, you can <laughs> take this whole thing out and throw away everything except for the tube. And just keep it stored um, but this kind of protects the neck from being necked so i kind of leave it in here and also when you do the swap again you want to save this so you could put the other one inside here and then that inside the arcade and you can recycle it so this next one is going to be the ge now this one i kind of researched on the internet a little bit you know because you look up the model numbers and whatnot so this one here the model number is uh let's see it's 19 gt319 and I read on the forums that this is a direct drop-in replacement for the K4900. Pretty sure it is. I'm probably going to keep this one as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it forward. So again, this is a GE 19 GT319. And I'm going to check everything, you know, just to be consistent with the tape and everything. And I'll just write K4900. If that's true... <laughs> I'm going to switch the Rolling Thunder because the Rolling Thunder has a basically bulletproof. I mean, there's no such thing as bulletproof. Have you heard in the last, as you guys heard in the last episode with uh, Buffett? <laughs> but um, you know, I did try to bulletproof as best I could my uh, K4900, which is in the Rolling Thunder right now. But that has track and field burning on it. So this would be really cool to do a tube swap for that. That's a drop and replacement where I just swap it and we're done. So let's see, I'm gonna lift this off now. All right. So let me see if I can get a good angle here. You guys see that good? Yeah, you can see it pretty good. So I'm looking for the colored yolks. So just flip this to see. Um, again, I'm not discharging it because I'm only gonna grab the yoke wires, um, and I believe this isn't it because that's connected to the neck board. It's this right here, these colored ones. They're not always the same color. There's definitely four wires here, and it is all the way down there. And this one is separate. Yeah, I've seen this before. We have two into the board, and then there's two separate ones here. So they're actually not on a connector at all. So... I figured that since this was kind of old. Um, anyway, the, the RCA um, is a tube and it's A48, AAB13X02. So A48 again, it says A48, AAB13X. 
And then on the bottom there, it says 6.3 volts, 50 volts G1, and then the neck is CR23. So CR23s are K4900s and G07s. So this one looks good so far. So now we're just gonna te test the, uh, the vertical and the horizontal, which we don't know what's what. <laughs> I'm gonna take my multimeter. I'm gonna set it to continuity again to show you guys one more time. Um, actually, I don't need that. You can just hear the sound here. All right. So if you go here and here, you see how it's continuity? You hear it because they're on the same windings there, see? So you have these two, and then you have these two here. All right, if you do opposite, obviously it's not gonna buzz, it's not gonna do anything because they're not on the same circuit. So um, anyway, that's how you know, I just wanted to show you that again, if they're not the same color. All right, so, I'm gonna set it back to ohms here. And we're gonna test this one here. I'm not sure what's vertical and what's horizontal, but usually the lower one is the horizontal. So this one here says 11.5 for horizontal or vertical. I'm not sure which is which yet. So 11 point, 11.4. Yeah, and this one here, see if we can put it in there. is 3.6 so this may not be i have to check i'm not sure what the uh, settings are but this is 3.5 okay so this is ver this is horizontal when i'm in right now so 3.5 is usually the lower one so that's 3.5 and 3.5 and 11.4 all right so now i'm going to put this on the front here right there and it's going to be i wrote k4900 on it um you know just for myself so i know that that's compatible it should be a drop-in replacement uh so whenever it's drop in i'm going to write it right on there so yeah success so now it's two for two that's really great so let me take this one out. So this one here is, let's look here. It is a Magnavox. And the model number on this one, let me look here is uh, 19G602-00AA. So again, it has 19 in it, so. All right, so this is coming right off. There we go. There's this one, there's that one. All right, so they're nice. And these are big enough to fit my uh, multimeter there. So, so this one's 6.3 volts for the heater. The G1 is 50 volts and the neck is CR31. So if you wanna see it on there, that's basically it. I just typed it in. All right. So that is CR31. I think I already wrote it on here because I knew, yep. And what we're gonna do is now measure. So let's do the, um, what are we gonna do first? The horizontal, just the blue and red. So that one, it looks like it's pin two. Is it the, it's the first pin, it doesn't matter because they're both connected. So this one says, I'm gonna hold it up here. Looks like it's 3.5. Okay, and then this other one here for vertical, it's actually counting up. 14.4, so 3.5, 14.4. Okay, um, yeah, so that's gonna be uh, for the K7000, 3.5 and 14, the max it could do is five on the Vertical and the horizontal is around 3.4. So that's actually a perfect match with the pinout and everything, with the yoke. Uh, so it's a drop-in replacement for a K7000. So this one's done. We got three for three. Let me grab this one out, take it out. This one is the Broxonic. And this one is model number. Uh, looks like it's a little cut off here. So it's CTSGT something nine three six nine 
CTT. So I'll put the links um, once I get everything done. I have, um, I'll put everything in the description with, uh, I guess, all the readings uh, for each one and what tubes were in them. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that. I'm just reading it off, I guess, for reference. Anyway, so let's flip this down. And all right, so this is open now. Let's look for those wires. Right now you have the colored ones from the yoke and it's those right there. I mean, you can measure them right up here, I guess. Yeah, let me do that because I can see them right there. This one's the red. This one here is brown. It's not, oh, there it is. So it's brown, it's not green. And this one is yellow. So sometimes we'll have that where they're different colors. Um, so don't go by colors, just go by where they are. So the top ones right here are gonna be the um, horizontal and then below that is the vertical. <clears throat> if you're looking at it from the other way around, the ones closer to the tube are actually the vertical and the other ones are horizontal. So, wow, these are a little different here. That one's 2.3. Yeah, 2.3. And then this other one is, it's hard to get them both on there and hold them. Two point three and twelve point four. So that right there is a candidate for <clears throat> another tube swap, but the oak readings are, are a little a lot different actually than what I'm used to. So I don't think I can use this yoke. I'm probably gonna have to switch it out if I do use it. So mm, do I recycle this? Do I keep it? It depends. If I have another one that I can use, um, this one I may end up, uh, you know, because you could always just take off the yoke and put it on. But if I have a drop in replacement, I'm probably going to recycle this because I won't, you know, I don't want to store six TVs. So we'll see. I may, uh, you know, I, have, I can afford to be picky right now because I have six of them. All right. So this one, it's torn off and it's going to be right there so that one i'm not writing what it's at because i don't know if it's a direct drop and replacement but i did write cr23 on there so i know and all the settings so i can determine that later i'll look it up do research when i need something and grab it if i need it let me grab this one off all right so this one I actually opened up ahead of time um i just want to show you real quick this is the uh one that I didn't name at the beginning because it doesn't have a label on the front. But if you look on the back here, it says uh, Sylvania. And the model number is SYL. Oop, no, that's the name of it. Hold on a second. It doesn't really have a model number. Huh. Yeah, this model number is kind of torn off here. Um, let me see if you can see it there. There we go. So see how it's kind of ripped here? So it says Sylvania and then the model number is ripped off. So I don't know what it is. So I won't be able to tell if this is really compatible or not. Um, but it looks like an older TV, you know? So um, this might be, you know, when I did the readings, see, I'll put it right here. Let me actually just go ahead and move this to the front so I can show you guys. Let me uh, turn it around. All right, so. This is a TV set. You can see it's, it looks like an older TV set. So it's probably going to be, uh, I think when I was in there, I forgot to write it down, but this is a CR23 in here. So I'm going to write CR23. It might be a drop and replacement for something, maybe a GO7. You never know. So we'll get lucky. So this is it here. Um, it's 2.7 ohms on the red and blue. And then it's 39 ohms on the yellow green, which is pretty high. And I remember, if I'm not mistaken, the GO7 was really high. We needed to have uh, like a high ohm for that. So it might be a, another drop and replacement for GO7. That would be fantastic, actually. So what I'm going to do, let me just uh, refine this here. Where did I put my marker? Here it is. So I'm actually going to write on top. Um, so red and blue, this is going to be horizontal and this is going to be vertical. And yeah, it's like, there we go. 
And I'm gonna stick this right on the front. And we are good to go. So that's that. Um, man, fingers crossed, that'd be great. So I'm gonna do more research because I do have a G07 on the side. I really wonder, hmm. Maybe I'll have to take a pause and figure it out. Yeah, let me do that. Let me pause and I'm gonna quickly go on my G07. I have a spare that's not working um, on the side here. That's not in any machine. I'm just gonna pull it out and quickly measure the top and I'll let you know what it is. All right guys, so I double checked and it is 2.2 ohms for horizontal and the vertical is 52.9. So, <laughs> That to me looks pretty close, so I gotta do more research on that. But 2.2 uh, and this one's 2.7, so that'll work definitely. And then the vertical is, uh, you know, almost 53 there, so 52.9. So, um, yeah, this is close to 40. So I wonder if I can do that. I'm gonna, maybe I'm gonna, I'll do more research and I'll also ask Buffett, he would know for sure, because uh, he does tube swaps. He has tons of tubes he can swap in there. So let me find out. Uh, what it is, um, and I guess, um, you know, I'll uh, write in the comments um, if it is, and if it is um, compatible, we can always have a G07, and this would be extremely valuable, which is awesome. So, uh, don't know yet. <laughs> uh, great, so let me um, go ahead and get another one here, and we'll do the last one, and we'll be done. That's the Trinitron, the Sony is next. Okay, so this one is a little more complex. I actually had to hinge it open here because these things are still connected. I could disconnect them, I guess, from down here. I mean, this is a speaker, and then this here disconnects from right there. Uh, this is actually the tuner. Um, but I'm just gonna leave it hinged open because I just wanna check what it is. Um, so, it's connected here on the board. If you look over here, um, let's see, where is it down here? This is it right here. So it's coming off the yoke and it's going straight down onto there. Uh, how many wires we got here? Let me untwist these real quick. This thing is filthy. Uh, same thing over here. I'm actually gonna save these because these are really cool. They're like twist ties, but they're made of plastic um, and they're pretty good. I'm gonna keep these <laughs> as parts because I'm constantly Looking for stuff to tie monitors down. Put it in my little parts thing there. So, these right here is what I need. 9.3 and 1.5. And I don't think that's within any range that I know of. 9.3 and 9.5. So yeah, I'm gonna say that this isn't compatible. <laughs> Okay, guys, that about does it for this episode. Um, so it turns out that this one here, I talked to Buffett. He said that this one is for a K4900. It's not for a G07 like I had hoped. So none of these were a candidate for a G07. Uh, but this one here may or may not be. I still have to do more research. I kind of put a question mark here because I'm not really sure if this is for a K4900. That's what the forum said. But the ohms really uh, do not match um, the chassis or the yoke, actually. Uh, for the 4900 and this one here does so i actually researched it talked to buffett and did my readings and then i was like you know what i think it's a better match and then he confirmed he's like well you know the k4900 if memory serves is a lot better so um yeah so that's a direct drop and replacement for that uh this one still is questionable this one is definitely a k7000 that's a k7000 as well this trinitron down here that you can't see um i'm probably just gonna end up just recycling because I have no use for it. I don't really have a sharp uh, monitor. Um, so there's no way I can use that chassis. I mean, sorry, the tube. And then this one down here, what did I write down here? I think it's a CR23, 2.3 ohms at 12.4 ohms. So I might keep this around for a little bit um, because I may be able to swap that, um, you know, because it's a CR23 uh, pinout on the back of the neck. And, um, you know, I could always switch the yokes and still use that. So um, I think I'm gonna keep these five right here and get rid of the, uh, you know, the Trinitron on the bottom, the Sony. So I guess it was pretty successful after all, especially the fact that I got one of these. These are really rare uh, to get, drop and replacement for 4,900, so that's awesome. So uh, yeah, so that's it. Um, so yeah, I'm a little tired now. <laughs> Actually, I said, let me do this now. 
what I ended up doing is I um, just came back from uh, Jay's place, uh, Falcon's Maze. Um, he had, uh, you know, um, every now and then he'll have an arcade Wednesday. Drove all the way out there, it was a couple hours away, and uh, it was totally worth it because, um, you know, all my friends were there um, that I hadn't seen in a while. Um, you know, we have Mike from New Hampshire. We had John from Massachusetts, from John's Arcade. Um, we had Jay, of course, um, who was really gracious host and everything, and we got to meet people. We met his girlfriend. We met just, it was really a lot of fun. So we have a group photo here. I'll just put it up right here. It was just really great time. He had overflow in the garage. He had a wall of monitors, which totally floored me when I saw that. I was like, it's like in heaven. It was awesome. Um, and of course, you know, his uh, stuff downstairs, which we, you know, we tried fixing his uh, spy hunter. Didn't really succeed in that, but it was still fun doing it. Um, and um, we basically just had a good time, good food, good people, good conversation, and had a, had a really great time. So that's what it's all about. I love this hobby totally. Um, so again, um, if you guys haven't entered, that reminds me, this is coming out on Friday morning. Uh, you have until Sunday at midnight Eastern Standard Time to enter the giveaway. We're giving away a uh, Crafty Mech test pattern generator, or TPG as everybody calls it. Um, and it's totally free. He's going to ship it directly to you. So anyway, just, you know, um, go to my Twitter. It's at Dell's Arcade, um, at D-E-L-S Arcade. You'll see the thing right here. And on there, you'll find the link for the uh, Gleam uh, giveaway where you just click on it and you kind of check all the stuff and you can enter it multiple times before Sunday. But once Sunday comes out, what I'll do is probably announce it the Friday or the next episode you're going to see after this one here. And then we'll announce the winner and, uh, you know, he'll mail it out directly to them. So good luck to you guys. But if you haven't done it already, go over there and uh, enter the contest. It's really cool. Um, so that's it. I guess, uh, you know, follow me on Instagram as well. I have an account there. And, uh, you know, you guys have been great with subscribing and passing it on. And the last video I did with uh, Buffett came out really good. And it was really surprising how many people just, you know, had really positive things to say in the comments. And I really love reading that. I read every single one, tried to respond to people. And uh, we're definitely going to do another one in the future. Um, you know, I already asked him. He said, yeah, you know, you can come down. So I'm going to bring my stuff down there. We'll work on stuff together. And I know you guys want to see... Uh, how the genius works because he's really good at what he does so uh yeah so we'll definitely do that so i guess that about does it for this video hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you find it useful and helpful and i guess you'll see you in the next one good luck with the contest by the way take care